Activision Blizzard, Microsoft, and Bobby Kotick, all these things are obviously related. And one of the things people have wanted to know for quite a long time is if the acquisition goes through, which it absolutely, I, I think, is going to at this stage, what's going to happen to Bobby? That's because Bobby is, in many ways in gaming, seen as the root of all evil. Not that that is necessarily true, but he's a pretty unpopular figurehead, right? A lot of people want to see the company making different decisions, perhaps decisions that are more calibrated towards the long term. So this question, will Bobby remain, has hung over everything for years. And here, when asked by IGN, who's going to make uh, some specific decisions, this is what Phil Spencer said. Well, th there's a different person making the decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I do love his little burst into laughter at the end, and I think this is very much a I am the captain now moment. Now, what this is referring to is Game Pass. Bobby basically talked in the past about how Game Pass is not necessarily the best deal for them. Indeed, Bobby was actually not a fan of the 70-30 split on the Xbox store, and seemingly he was playing real hardball in those negotiations, and he was able to get an 80-20 split in Activision's favor uh, for actually being on the Xbox Store, which is a pretty damn impressive uh, bit of negotiating from Kotick. Of course, now that Phil's making the decisions, the shoe is firmly on the other foot. So by now, the deal is, in all intents and purposes, done. The CMA have functionally got their problems addressed. There's little expectation of a delay, meaning that soon Phil Spencer will actually be the man running Activision Blizzard as a part of Microsoft. They will report to him. What does that mean now that a different man is making those ultimate decisions? And of course, that the first place is going to start is today's sponsor, AG1, which is your ultimate nutritional insurance policy. I've been drinking AG1 for years, even since before they reached out to me, so I'm very happy to have them with us. Now, AG1 is a vitamin, mineral, and probiotic blend that covers your foundational nutritional needs, and that's why I'm all in on it. I want to have those needs covered. It is packed with probiotics that boost my gut health. Now, your gut is a crazy place. Uh, unsung mastermind of your body. This whole army of gut microbiota are doing useful things, you know, helping your brain, your immune system, your overall health. Their probiotic supports optimal gut health. It's like having little you know, billions of workers helping you out. Very worthwhile investment. But of course, that's not all. AG1 also contains a mix of adaptogens, vitamins, and minerals, which make sure that all of your needs are met. And also, tastes great. I have it every morning. So if you're ready to give AG1 a try, just visit drinkag1.com forward slash bellular news. They will send you five free travel packs, which is perfect for staying fueled up while you're on the move. And as a bonus, they'll throw in a year supply of vitamin D3 and K2. So go power up your health at drinkag1.com. A big thanks to them for joining this channel as a sponsor. And with that said, hit up that link and let's go. Okay, that may have been a lie. I don't know if he's going to start with a sponsor, but anyway, let's talk about Bobby. Okay, an awful lot of people are excited about the idea of Bobby going. Even one thing for workers, Microsoft has very explicitly accepted a union. So a lot of devs, a lot of QA testers especially think this may mean they will get better conditions. And also the sidelining of Bobby. And that is not an incorrect thing to think. Phil Spencer would likely be able to just flat out override Bobby on anything that's important. And we do have examples of this. Here's a great one. So ZeniMax, they are the broad group that of course involves Bethesda, right? Obviously, Redfall is a game that did not come out on PlayStation, even though it was initially supposed to. And that's because Xbox asks them, right? Makes it pretty damn clear. But that is not the same thing as Bobby Kotick just being gone and all of those decisions changing. There is one major reason to believe he will remain, but there are actually sources, apparently sources in and around Kotick that say that he does not plan to stay. So let's break this down. In January 2022, when the acquisition was announced, they uh, basically said Bobby will continue to serve as CEO and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Him and the team will work to further strengthen the company's culture <laughs> and accelerate business growth. And that does mean, yeah, Bobby may not be going anywhere, something we should be prepared for. He has been the CEO of Activision Blizzard since 1991. That is 32 years. That is actually older than PlayStation and Xbox as brands. Bobby has been around for that long. He has been the CEO of this company since before I was even born. So Bobby, in a way, feels like a permanent, almost a piece of the furniture, right? Almost a structural part of the main building. He's been there for so long. 
Now, obviously, we can see many of the impacts of C-suite level decisions on the games that uh, that we play. Of course, for Microsoft, they've just got, and in a way, they've just acquired one of the most friggin' awesome looking balance sheets in the entire games industry, but certainly they've acquired this asset. And that means that merely continuity, that's not a win. It's certainly not a loss. It's more of a draw. They're going to want things to be better. And Bobby kind of knows this. He has actually spoken publicly on the issue of continuity. He said he's willing to stay for as long as Microsoft needs him uh, during a time where there will be some amount of upheaval for Activision Blizzard King. So he may not be leaving, but it does seem that some others certainly will be leaving, and this is where we can go to ZeniMax again. So ZeniMax Media is probably our best example here. It's one company comprised of several subsidiaries that was acquired by Microsoft, and what happened there is that their board was dissolved post-acquisition because they simply were not needed anymore. Now, that means, we would think, that Activision Blizzard's board of directors will likely be dissolved. And there's a fair few people on that board that let's just say we're not particularly great fans of. And sure, some people who are key could retain an onboard position, but that'll probably happen. Now you may say, Michael, why would these people like no long, you know, why would these people on the board like dissolve their own position? And the answer there is, stonks. They all will have a lot. This is an awesome payday. They will happily be dissolved, basically. But of course, job losses are not something that will be limited to that board of directors. And this one is kind of hard to tell. Obviously, post-acquisition, there quite often ends up being a lot of duplication of like roles and capabilities um, across companies. So you'll often see a sort of a leaning down of the company that is being acquired. Now, while Activision Blizzard haven't done humongous, big, like, you know, mega public uh, job losses, even though there have been some, um, if they have done like a bit of a hiring freeze and they've just let people leave, perhaps they could be in a more lean position. But anyhow, in a timeline where there perhaps isn't an immediate successor figure to Kotick and where there could be some upheaval, it does make sense to actually keep him on to ensure some continuity. Uh, and this is especially because um, Bobby Kotick, if he leaves, he is going to be a very, very rich man, a even more rich man. Here's something. Upon a termination of employment by us without cause or good reason during the 12 month period following a change of control, Mr. Kotick would have received payments and benefits totaling $292 million uh, had the event occurred in December 2020. So basically, uh, Microsoft would suffer both financially and in terms of stability if they removed Kotick. Um, and uh, he doesn't need to go anywhere. However, he may actually go away. So in 2022, sources that are familiar with Bobby Kotick's plans, they leaked or reported to the Wall Street Journal that he actually would be leaving the company after the acquisition goes through. And this kind of does make sense. I mean, we've got little slices of, of Bobby over the years. Do, do you think he's going to be, you know, comfortable not being the, not being the top dog, you know, when he's got Phil Spencer sitting here talking to IGN saying, ah, <laughs> someone else will be making the decisions. And then he laughs, everyone knowing that person is you, Phil. And think about it too. Like Bobby's been there for years with his board. The board's probably going to be dissolved. Like it will seem like a natural time for him to leave. Of course, he's probably not going to leave unless he's got somewhere for his a big, lovely golden parachute to land him onto. Now, it does seem then kind of unlikely that he would step down to a lower position somewhere else in the industry, right? It also seems there's on, only really so many equivalent CEO roles in the industry. You don't really get much bigger than Activision Blizzard. And as to what else it could be, I think there are implications from things that have happened. So do you remember the puff piece from Variety, right? That was a fairly interesting one. It absolutely read like an attempt to convince, you know, convince Wall Street, convince other executives that he really is a guy that they should be having his eye on. It was massive image rehab, right? So you've got that variety piece, which is doing some good PR for him. It's, uh, of course, is also a funny one that reminded us all that Bobby Kotick is a member of the Screen Actors Guild. Um, I'm sure he's having a great time on, or had a great time on that uh, picket line. Uh, that's because of a appearance in the movie Moneyball. And we also know that he has been at some interesting private parties with people in the entertainment in industry. There you go. It's James Gordon and Bobby Kotick. Um, of course, you don't know who she is, but uh, yeah, man, Kotick, Gordon in the same place. What a beautiful, beautiful, happy image. 
a bit weird then, like he's seemingly schmoozing about with big name entertainment types. Uh, so in short here, would it be surprising if he ended up in the C-suite of some media group, right? Maybe a CEO? I don't think it would be surprising. And while it's just the theory around the office has, has bounced the idea of him sort of parlaying his, uh, you know, his experience and his contacts into perhaps executive producing something like a Call of Duty movie. Um, again, hey, video game adaptations, pretty big thing now. But regardless of where he lands, he, in that case, would not be their problem anymore. And that means that they just have Xbox and audiences to worry about. And that brings us onto the topic then of what could this actually mean for games? So in terms of the three arms of Activision Blizzard King, we now have multiple legally binding statements that Microsoft will be keeping Call of Duty on all platforms for a decade. So basically the Activision side of things is pretty well handled. Uh, Blizzard will also likely be business as usual. Yes, they have got problems. Perhaps the green lighting and funding of future projects will be a little bit of a different thing. Broadly, though, you can see Blizzard getting more content out, having more releases uh, these days. Yes, Overwatch 2 and D4 have perhaps not been perfect, but they're actually shipping product now. Uh, King then, they will be fairly massive for keeping Microsoft's mobile ambitions afloat. They will also come with extremely useful data. And this is the bit where it doesn't matter to us, but uh, the biggest draw of the acquisition, at least per their statements to regulators, is actually King, not the other things. And then more broadly, Activision Blizzard games will be coming to Game Pass as soon as that is mechanically possible. And speaking to IGN, Phil Spencer actually clarified that uh, it would not be immediate for that transfer. And there's a few reasons why. Game Pass games have got to have a Microsoft Store version. Of course, that's not necessary for Battle.net and Steam. There'll be work there. Uh, this is what he said. There's work for us to go do, just mechanical work for us to go do. Sure, it'll take us time, uh, definitely time to get the games in the portfolio. So yes, those games will, of course, end up on Game Pass. And uh, we'll probably see this uh, apply, you know, broadly across everything, which is exactly what happened with Bethesda. So yes, Game Pass will probably end up being a better deal in that regard. Now, will Battle.net go anywhere, right? People may be thinking about the dead Bethesda launcher. Uh, no, I think Battle.net is a large platform. They'll absolutely uh, keep it, right? It just, the Bethesda launcher does not have the pedigree of Battle.net, right? Now, I think the thing that matters more is new projects when these acquisitions happen, new owners will probably want a full audit of everything that is going on so they can potentially pick out the sorts of projects that would align with their wider goals. And we have examples of this. When Obsidian was acquired by Microsoft, a small team was prototyping Grounded, right? That was something completely different to their previous titles. But of course, with Game Pass being a delivery mechanism, that small team that was uh, prototyping Grounded actually got to do more with that, right? And that meant that that was something that Xbox were able to showcase within half a year of their sale completing. So there will probably be some other smaller ticket items. So we could see some things like that. In terms of cancellations, that's uh, that's where things get interesting. Microsoft has actually got fairly different ambitions, uh, I, I think anyway, to Activision Blizzard. You've got to remember, Activision Blizzard is a third party, right? That means that unless they're selling a Battle.net, they're selling on other people's stores. And when they sell on somebody else's store, I mean, that's it. They're selling on their store. It's not like it's a platform that they own that they can invest in for future returns, right? So if you're Microsoft or you're Sony, you'll be doing all these things to increase the size of your platform because the more people that are on your platform, the more recurring revenue you get from everything that they do on that platform. Um, I think there's a degree of being mercenary that, uh, that is far more the case if you are one of those third-party publishers. Um, so, being a first party, there are different incentives, first party incentives. There are games that maybe would only work with Game Pass as their format of delivery that now I think could be a hell of a lot better. Wouldn't it be interesting if Blizzard's new survival game ended up being a day one and Game Pass thing? Because yes, some revenue would certainly be sacrificed there. The other side though, it's probably a co-op online survival game. It really does rely on a network effect. Therefore, it being in Game Pass will allow so many more people to play it. That's just one of the many examples. I've seen people say that like a StarCraft 3 is a more likely thing in the Microsoft future than not in the Microsoft future. Um, now, the bit where you could suddenly become quite down on all of this is to say, yeah, but look at Redfall, right? Ah, see, that's the thing. 
With Redfall, that was something that was kicked off by ZeniMax in a period of basically insanity where they did that to a whole bunch of games. And Microsoft were then famously very hands off of the whole situation. One then has to wonder, after the very large embarrassment of Redfall, will they be hands off anymore? I would say likely, uh, likely no. I still would not get excited about new developments post acquisition because that stuff's going to be a very, very long way off. But uh, hey, perhaps those less mercenary things will be useful. Um, it's one of those things I don't want to talk about like exactly who it was. Um, I've talked to people in the past who have been like not, you know, not small fry, uh, you know, small, small fry at Blizzard who've, you know, like really been in Blizzard teams and uh, who have talked about like, yeah, no, with Activision, different things got greenlit. Everything had to be a potential billion dollar franchise. That's why there's no StarCraft. That's, you know, why all these things got canceled. You know, they had so many games, like uh, they had a Battlefield styled StarCraft game that, uh, you know, the people who I talked to said was really, really damn impressive. And unfortunately that game died so more people could go on to Overwatch 2. I've got to assume Overwatch 2 plans that obviously were then canceled, meaning we lost everything. Anyhow, I think there'll be some different decision making. I think that will be uh, actually a fairly good thing. And as for Bobby, I think he will stick around. And then I think his golden parachute will take him to somewhere else, likely in the entertainment industry. I really don't think that he is done being a CEO, but I do see there being a fairly significant time limit on, um, you know, on, on him here. Right? I just don't think, I don't think he's going to stick around for that long. I mean, hell, even think about like the Overwatch League, Call of Duty League, um, more of the Overwatch League that's very much been massacred. That was a bit of a pet project of his. Now it's kind of going away. It just doesn't make sense to me that uh, that, that he'll stay around. So that's, uh, that's what I think. That's what we could uh, pick up, right? Going back to those sources from 2022, the claim that he's actually uh, likely is going to be leaving. Um, I'd love to know what you think. And I suppose if there's different decision-making, what kinds of things would you like to see happen? Because with all these recent Blizzard games, like you look at D4, the artistry and the craft of that game is, is really quite great. You look at Overwatch, like it does play great. You know, World of Warcraft, so much better than it's been in so many years. You just constantly have this situation of the developers making great games, but then aspects of, you know, business and production coming in there and, and doing the damage. Will we see that damage? So there we have it, the situation with Bobby. What sorts of things would you like to see in a post-Bobby world? Do you actually think that there could be any meaningful change or do you think it's just going to be different management, same situation? I want to know what you think. Let me know down below. You can check out yesterday's video. Um, here, it'll be in a box or something like that. Um, of course, check out AG1, today's sponsor. With that, I'll see you next time.